President Trump's longtime attorney Michael Cohen breaking his silence. Could he also be signaling the end of his days as the president's loyal fixer? Cohen has been tight-lipped in the months since he's been under criminal investigation by federal prosecutors in New York. This morning, however, in an interview with Good Morning America, he made it clear his highest priority is his family, not the president, saying, my wife, my daughter, and my son have my first loyalty and always will. I put family and country first. CNN national political reporter MJ Lee joins me now. Uh, he also said, MJ, that he feels like he's been made to look like a villain in this story. He was pretty candid on a number of points. Yeah, that's right. I mean, Michael Cohen appears to be sending a clear message that he is no longer the guy who is just going to take a bullet for Donald Trump, his former boss. Uh, he was asked more than once as a course of this ABC interview about loyalty. Uh, will he go out of his way to protect Donald Trump? Will he put Donald Trump before his own family? And Cohen Cohen made it very clear that he's going to put his family and his country first, but he went a step further than that. Uh, he said that he's not going to be used by anyone and that he is not the bad guy. I, I, here's a part of what he said. He said, I will not be a punching bag as a part of anyone's defense strategy. I am not a villain of this story and I will not allow others to try to depict me that way. Now, it's striking because, as you said, he has been laying low uh, ever since the authorities raided his home a couple of months ago. And now we are seeing a clear tone of defensive it's also interesting. He was, of course, not surprisingly asked about this now infamous $130,000 payment right. to Stormy Daniels. He didn't have as much to say about that, though. Yeah, you know, what is more telling, I think, than what he did say is also what he didn't say. Uh, you're right that he was asked about the $130,000 payment that he made to adult film star Stormy Daniels back in uh, 2016, very shortly before the election. And keep in mind what he has been saying all along. He has always said, look, I did this on my own. This was action that I took mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of President Trump, who was my boss. And he didn't have anything to do with this. He didn't even know about this. We'll take a look at uh, what he actually said to uh, ABC this time around. He said, uh, I want to answer. One day I will answer. But for now, I can't comment further on advice of my counsel. Now, to be clear, this was when he was asked, did President Trump uh, ask you to make this payment? Did he promise that he would reimburse you? Mm -hmm. And he's now saying, I actually can't go there. So very telling that he's refusing to answer that question when up until now he has said, yes, I did this and I did this on my own. The non-answers that say so much, as they always do. Right. It was also interesting that he does not seem to share the president's view when it comes to the FBI. That's right. Uh, he appears to be distancing, uh, distancing himself from uh, Donald Trump. And two areas uh, where he did this that I think is worth pointing out. Uh, one is the FBI raid of his home, his hotel room that we're also uh, familiar with now. Uh, Remember that when this happened, Trump said uh, that this was disgraceful, that this was an attack on our country in a true sense. He was clear, clearly angry about it. Michael Cohen is now saying, uh, quote, I don't agree with those who demonize or vilify the FBI. I respect the FBI as an institution as well as their agents. Uh, he said that the agents were actually very respectful and courteous when they uh, raided his home. Uh, the second area where he is now distancing himself from Trump is the Mueller investigation. Uh, of course, we know that President Trump has been uh, calling this a witch hunt uh, and b being very skeptical about what intelligence officials have said about uh, Russia meddling in the 2016 election. Well, Michael Cohen is now saying this. He says, I don't like the term witch hunt as an American. I repudiate Russia's or any other foreign government's attempt to interfere or meddle in our democratic process. And I would call on all Americans to do the same. Uh, he also added, and this appears to be a statement directed at President Trump, simply accepting Putin denial is unsustainable. I choose to believe our intelligence agencies. So the substance of what he's saying, Erica, is very interesting. But I think more importantly, the tone is very, very telling. It certainly is. And we're going to dig into a little bit of that now. MJ, appreciate it. Thank you. Joining me now, CNN chief legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin and CNN senior political analyst Ron Brownstein. I mean, Jeff, before we even dive into everything that was said and what wasn't said, I find it surprising that this interview happened at all. Yes. Do you? I do, and I suspect that was against his lawyer's advice. Guy Petrillo is a uh, very experienced lawyer, particularly a negotiator with the government. Um, and uh, that's just something that lawyers generally recommend against. Uh, it's better for to let a lawyer negotiate with with uh, with the prosecutors rather than do it through the news media. But, you know, people talk to the news media, especially uh, famous ones like George Stephanopoulos, for all sorts of reasons, to satisfy their own ego, to make themselves seem important. Uh, fortunately, they do because we like 
when people talk to us. But uh, I, I, I think it was bizarre of him to do this, and I don't think it's particularly helpful. What about, though, in terms of timing, Ron? Do you think there's something more that we could read into that, especially in terms of what seemed to be some sort of a signal to the president there? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, if you, if you the, the other option was to, you know, talk privately to the prosecutors. I mean, I, I think, you know, one reason to do this in public is so that the president knows that you're doing it and exactly why uh, he wants the president to know that he's doing it, I think, is another question. I mean, this, this interview sort of reminded me uh, a little bit of old time burlesque. It, it gave the impression that maybe more was shown than actually was uh, in that he made a lot of comments that were suggestive that he had things to say. But he also went on to say that he was not aware of any collusion. He did not invo he was not involved in any collusion. He denied the allegations in in the dossier uh, that he went to Prague, as you recall, from the, the you know, the, the dossier way back when. So, uh, you know, exactly what uh, I, so often in the Mueller investigation, we have been blindsided. Uh, and I think the, the only uh, cautious and, and prudent kind of a, approach to it is to recognize that it is an iceberg where most of it is below the surface. And exactly where this is going and what it means, I think we will not know for many weeks. Well, and Jeff, too, just remind us, I mean, this is we're talking about Michael Cohen being investigated by the Southern District of New York. Um, I mean, what would the impact be on the Mueller investigation, if anything, here? Well, if he were to decide to cooperate, if he were to, say, plead guilty uh, to some sort of offense in the Southern District, which was related, let's say, exclusively to his business career and agree to cooperate, he would have to cooperate, cooperate with the entire Department of Justice, and that would mean the Mueller investigation, too, even though the guilty plea would be through a separate set of prosecutors. Once you agree to cooperate with the government, you agree to cooperate with all of the government. You can't just say, well, I'll talk to these prosecutors, but not those prosecutors. One of the parts of a deal, when you make a deal, is that you give up your right to pick and choose uh, which government investigators you're going to talk to. The other thing that's interesting in terms of messaging, the president tweeted, I believe it was back in April, most people will flip uh, if, if the government mm -hmm. will let them out of trouble, even if it means lying or making up stories. Sorry, I don't see Michael doing that. Now, I guess you could read that a couple of different ways. He doesn't see him lying, right. he doesn't see him making things up, doesn't see him flipping. But Ron, um, is this also in some ways setting Michael Cohen up so that if he does decide to flip in the eyes of the president, well, he was just a liar anyway. He was just doing it to save himself. Yeah, look, I mean, I think the history of loyalty with the president is that he expects a one-way street. And I, I don't think anybody would, would suspect for a moment that he would hesitate about turning on anyone short of immediate family, if, if uh, maybe even immediate family, if he thought uh, they could hurt him. I, I, I just continue to be more intrigued by what is the message that Michael Cohen is sending to the president if he, if he is trying to send one. Is it fear me? Uh, is that the message? Is the message fund me? Because as we know, he has asked him in the past. There have been, there been reports in the past that he's that he's sought uh, le you know financial help. Or mm -hmm. is the message fund me or fear me? Right. I mean, it, it's it's hard to know exactly uh, what he is saying. But I think that the, the choice to do this and to not do it on Fox, where he would be signaling kind of sympathy for the president to go on ABC with George Stephanopoulos. It is a shot across the bow, I think, at the White House. But what its ultimate intent is, I think, is still too early to tell. And, and can I just say, as a former yeah. federal prosecutor, just to, to respond to what the president said in that tweet, federal prosecutors do not actually get people to lie. That is, a, that is unethical, it is illegal. So the idea that prosecutors just allow people to lie when, when they cooperate is just, you know, it's, it's something that not only a president of the United States shouldn't say, anyone who's informed about the way the American legal system works should know that that's just not how federal prosecutors work in this country. I'd also like to thank you, Jeff, for answering the, my next question before I had to ask it, so thank mm. you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what, What's fascinating is what we didn't hear uh, from him when it came to Stormy Daniels. Of course, he was going to be asked about that payment, which he said from the beginning. Oh, you know, I just did this. It was I did it out of goodwill for my client. I was just trying to help out here. Um, Jeff, is there anything in that answer that stood out to you? Well, what what it was a non answer. I mean, he said he would not really discuss what went on with Stormy Daniels. I mean, uh, Michael Cohn's public re public uh, responses to the Stormy Daniels situation have have varied a great deal over time. At first, he said he paid the money out of his own pocket, out of the goodness of his heart, something that no lawyer in the history of American law has ever done. That investi that that explanation has since been, uh, you know, re revised when Rudolph Giuliani said, well, 
um, there was a uh, reimbursement formula with the president where he repaid a certain amount per month. I don't think we know really what went on with the Stormy Daniels payment. The, all, all of that is, uh, I think, very much in flux. Uh, we'll see if the documents that the FBI seized um, shed, shed some light on it. But that is something that obviously would be of a great deal of interest to federal prosecutors.